Hello everyone. As we discussed in our previous sessions, that SR latches have an undefined state for a specific input, and uh, normally it's one one per set and reset. So this solution can be uh, this problem can be uh, solved by using D latch. D latch eliminates the undesirable undefined state in the SR latch. And the solution is pretty simple. It just adds a NOT gate and attaches our R input with the S input. And now we call it D input. D is for data. So now, even now, we know that there were two inputs, set and reset, and they were 0, 1, and 1, 0 for the reset and set states. So now if D is 1 here S would be uh, R would be 0 because of NOT gate and if D is 1 it is 0 if D is 0 then it is 1. So this NOT gate eventually uh, helps to um, get the uh, same functionality of our SR latches. But by doing this, we can avoid the unwanted input that were 0, 0 or 1, 1. So for NAND gate implementation, the unwanted input was 1, 1. So now in D latch, if we want to set, then reset will automatically be 0. But and if we want to reset, our input is 0, the next or the second input would be 1. So let's understand its truth table. Truth table or function table is pretty simple. Now there is only one input D and one clock cycle or clock bit. So let's say clock is one. So it goes here one and one. Now let's check for set state. That is D is one. So D would be input here one and zero here. And now inputs are complete. First one, one would produce a zero because AND gate produces one, one uh, as one and NAND would, would, go, uh, would give a zero. The second one is one, zero. So it would produce a one. Now the input to a NAND gate is zero. So the internal AND will, will, uh, will produce 0 and NOT will produce 1. So Q is 1 which eventually comes down here for second NAND one gate and 1 1 it produces 0. This 0 is again fed to the first or upper NAND gate 0 0 is 1 and 1 1 is 0. Now Q is equal to 1 it means this state is set. Now, so if D is 1, then Q is 1. So this is our entry in the set state. If D is 1, Q is 1 and the latch is in set state. Now we can feed this latch 0 to reset it. Alright, so now let's say the input is 0, clock is 1, 1 and 1 and if D is 0, the other input would be 1, sorry, other input would be 1 as well. So now this is 0, 1, 0, 1 is 1 and 1, 1 is 0 here. So from the uh, second gate here and gate 0 and with anything is 0 and NAND will produce 1 and this one goes up here 1 NAND 1 is 0 and it see this 0 comes down here 0 NAND 0 is 1 and again 1 goes up so it holds this state that is reset means <coughs> Q is 0. So data is 0, Q is 0. So if input is set, output is set. If input is 
reset the output is again reset so one for one and zero for zero and <clears throat> if we change our clock to zero it will produce no change to our uh, latch so if clock is one then there can be changes or input is received and output is changed but if clock is zero then whatever the input is there is no change in this latch so it means this latch only works when the clock pulse is high or clock tick is one so for zero there is no change or we can say that for zero clock the d latch contains the previous state or holds the previous state that could be zero or one okay so the summary a d latch has only two inputs d data and a control c the d input is sampled when c is one so d input converts to our output only if c is one for c is zero it's inactive if d is one the q output goes to one which we call a set state if d is zero the q output goes to zero which we call a reset state it is also called a transparent latch the d latch is also called a transparent latch transparent in the me in the sense that if this is the symbol of our d latch if there's zero at input the same zero is reflected as its state similarly if one is its input at d and it shows a one as output or as state so it's totally transparent if zero is input zero is output if zero is one is input and state is again one and this is delayed so let's see what is a uh, transparency whether it's good or bad for us so let's say this is our uh, transparent latch and its timing diagram normally we uh, draw our clock or enable here like this one upper is one lower is zero then one zero one zero so this is one this is zero this is one this is zero and so on and we have uh, learned that the d latch only works or uh, transmits uh, its input to q or state only when the enable is active or enable is one or clock or control is active the data input of the d latch is transferred to the q output when the control input is enabled so it enabled here so uh, this is our d q and q naught and q naught will always be opposite of q or complement of q so we just look at d and q so for this duration our enable our clock so let's say i write here c is zero and d actually moved from zero to one but no change at the output or at q because the d latch only affects or changes its state when the uh, clock is one so it's one till here and now the clock is one and it will start reflecting or start showing its state transparently when clock is one you see here one and one now d our data is changed back to zero here and clock is still one so the state is also zero or reset so it remains zero again it goes to one or changes to one our q is one and you see for here clock is one it again goes to zero our output is zero one sorry one output is one again zero output is zero and here you see clock again is inactive or zero so the output is zero q is zero even if it uh, input or d goes to one but output remains zero 
the let changes its state only when clock is active and if clock is zero or inactive it doesn't change or doesn't show any state or doesn't show any change so if you see q naught it is totally uh, complement of q you can see here so in the transparency what if the clock is zero and d changes its state it cannot be reflected as an output so now we see transparency is also an issue when the clock is zero and some other circuit or some other uh, uh, machine is changing changing our or can affect our input but it cannot be reflected as output because clock is zero so it cannot be accurate the transparency property actually uh, makes our latch act like a wire so if it's on then it's zero output is zero if it's one output is one and if clock is zero the switch is cut you can see here and it stores or uh, uh, and it produces output uh, the previous stored information are stored bit so it keeps on storing again and again on the basis of its input when clock is one and when the clock is zero it starts showing the previous state whether what is even if we change the input during the zero clock it doesn't show any change and one clock is one it is attached to output so like zero here zero here one here and one as input but what if there is zero so let's say if it was one then one is saved here and this latch will start producing one as its state and clock cycle is a periodic thing so whatever the duration of a single clock cycle it goes on and off on a, on a constant rate one up and one down cycle a uh, signal makes a clock cycle so from here this is from here one up and so let's say one up and one down this is one cycle this is another cycle another cycle another cycle and so on frequency is number of clock cycles per second so actually uh, in one second we count number of pulses that is called frequency clock up down are also referred as high low or enable and disable so we we will, we will use these terms interchangeably in our sessions so we can say up clock, clock up or down high or low enable or disable etc dlet saves one bit when clock pulse is low but becomes transparent when the pulse is high so we have discussed this already so for example if uh, dlet works fine for a half cycle the low one so when cycle is low it keeps the previous state which is its actually functionality which we want to achieve that we want to save the data or bits uh, for in for indefinite of time or unless we want to change it one high clock pulse it becomes transparent by showing input data as output on high clock pulse what if some other circuit changes input d during high clock pulse it may hold wrong data when clock pulse is low so as we have discussed that the duration of our clock pulses is fixed for example let's say uh, we assume that one clock cycle takes 100 nanoseconds so in this case each clock cycles take 100 nanoseconds but there may be some other circuits which can produce in outputs and can change our d or input during that cycle so in this case our latch could change its states frequently even if 
the clock is not uh, set back to zero. So let's say let's take this understand this uh, by an image. Now this is our transparent latch D latch, and uh, here it's a clock which is zero or one. This is an other circuit which is attached to our latch. It takes output of our latch and knots it and feedbacks to D. So you see it's D. If clock is low, no change. When clock is one for this time, when clock is one, here it starts showing its state at Q and this not gate actually reverts back uh, not that input if it was zero then it converts to one if it was one it converts to zero and inputs back to d and you see during that one clock cycle our d input is changed again and again so at the start it was one but when it goes uh, clock goes to zero it is zero now so there is possibility when clock was one the latch is totally open or transparent any circuit anything can change its input during that one cycle uh, one first half cycle when clock is high so there are ups and downs ups and downs ups and downs and when this clock goes back to zero so there is possibility then the uh, our bit is changed like here and same case this one and Q is also changed but Q it depends on D so it means uh, even if we resolved the issue of undefined state but D latch still has an issue of tra transparency so it works or saves data for half of a cycle when clock or cycle is low when cycle is high it's totally transparent its input can be changed at any time which would result uh, in its unreliability uh, so it means a d latch is not that reliable to store our data we may there is a possibility that we could get a wrong answer from it now the solution is we can also eliminate transparency and that transparency elimination solution is called flip-flop combination of two latches when separate the input and output so now we saw that a d latch works fine for a half cycle so what if we attach two latches one works for a high clock and other for lower one only one latch is open at a time so no trans transparency combination of two D latches is called a D flip flop or a master slave flip flop. First latch is master and the second is slave. So we can attach D uh, latches or even SR latches in pairs or in a master slave fashion to implement or to design flip flops. Flip flops are very important they are capable of holding one bit of data so we will discuss flip-flop and its uh, different types in ne next sessions